Hey everyone, Mark and Joey here on Monday, and Monday means recap day. Lots of sports happening on the weekend, as always, here in the summertime. And our number one sport that we're following right now, of course, is golf. As we come into the final of the uh, the overall season, uh, going to be the FedEx Cup next week. First of all, though, want to remind you about the website, ultimatesportschannel.com. Uh, please go there and visit. we got our sponsors there that uh, certainly help the show. And uh, we also have all the links of where you can see us which is going to be our, our podcast, you see audio or video. So head over there, take a look at that. You've got a, multiple platforms to watch us on, so we really appreciate you doing that. And uh, we're going to have a short um, flyer here that will show you uh, where we are as far as our podcasts are concerned. So anyway, let's get right into the golf here, Joe. Um, another weekend of beautiful weather. Uh, they started off rainy, uh, they, but the weather they played in was really good, and that's what brought uh, the golf course to its knees and brought some great scores. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like uh, every morning or every night they had a little bit of rain, which is horrible because when they played, it was actually too good then. Yeah. Um, and really, the greens are really soft. And I mean, Justin Thomas said the best. He goes, at this point, um, where golf is, he goes, if you're going to have a soft golf course, you can't stop us. It's just the way it is. And we, if you watch the golf this weekend, you would see it. Their drives that look like would have gone the rough, stayed yeah. in the fairway. You know, their irons that maybe they pull and should run off the greens are sticking on the greens. And, and then anytime they hit a good shot, it's literally right next to it. Was so, um, yeah, it, the course playing soft, uh, yielded some low scores and Medina had no defense for it. I still feel like, they could have maybe gotten a little meaner with some pins. By far, I really a, think so. And a little meaner with uh, maybe some setup uh, things. I, I felt like they actually made it kind of easy. Now, I think they were trying to get someone to go low, obviously, to catch Thomas maybe. But I felt like all week they were too generous, assuming that the golf course yeah. was tough enough. Um, I felt like the flags were too generous. And really what they should have realized was what Thomas said, was if it's soft, you're just not going to stop him. So give him hard pins, piss him off a little bit, make it extremely long or something. But I just felt like they, they thought the course was good enough by itself, and they didn't do enough on the pin placements or in the tee boxes set up. And really, along with soft uh, conditions, the scores were crazy low. And they couldn't have been any more wrong. I mean, not just Thomas didn't blow the field, the but they're field. all there. The I mean, field. this was like a regular PGA event in the middle of the season, or even at the beginning of the season yeah. where they set up <laughs> easy for scoring. I mean, minus 25 on that golf course is embarrassing. Uh, I feel like they've really hurt the mystique of the golf course. We talked about that on Saturday. And they should have done something. They should have not cut the rough, brought it in. They should have put the pins in tougher spots. Like, you should have done anything they could to not allow Saturday and Sunday to be a runaway. And unfortunately, I think they hurt Medina and they hurt the playoffs, quite honestly. I mean, this was way too easy. And playoffs are supposed to be harder, not easier. Yeah, I mean, even uh, at Liberty National, they got kind of low there with a 16 yeah. under. And it's just kind of shocking to me. I know people are going to say, well, you got to have wind and. And dry conditions to really stop these guys. There's other ways. I feel like there's other ways. And I feel like oh, both courses tried to uh, just hang on to the balance of what their courses are when it is tough. Instead of thinking that the fact the conditions are too easy. Yeah. And, and put it in their own hands and, and make pin placements uh, nasty. And who cares if it pisses them off? you got to make these scores lower. It's the FAX Cup. It's been embarrassing how low the scores have been. Now, as Azinger said, August does that a lot of times. And normally that's why it was good that the FAX Cup... Her. Ended in September because September was back to usually blowy conditions, drier conditions, and a little bit tougher golf course. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll see uh, going forward some changes. Um, you know, I don't know. I feel like the Tour Championship will redeem itself. They, it's always been a tough golf course for these guys to play. The par threes are long. They're tough. Uh, and really, they don't have joke par fives. Really, the par fives that Medina They're were embarrassing. Oh, uh, how, how short they made them play and... Obviously, wet conditions, the guys are able to hit three woods and stick them on green. So, um, you know, I really feel like that. Uh, Even the short par four. There was several guys who drove like 10 feet with a driver uh, on the short par four. I'm like, oh, my God. I just don't understand. You, you put that back right all four days. I don't understand yeah. putting it uh, right there in the front. But anyways, they did that. Or you move the tee box way back and put the pin in the front. But, you know, they, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of it. But anyways, you got a winner in yep. Thomas. Yep. Um, good to Come see him back. back. Winner. Yeah, good to see him back. He won early um, in his career. And he's, won this, he's won the FedEx Cup before, so an opportunity now to be one of the only ones to win twice. Only him and Tiger. Tiger. Only him and Tiger. So if he wins, it'll be only him and Tiger win the FedEx Cup twice. He's had a good career so far. This year was really bad. Did not have a win up to this point. As we know, started off stronger, but got the wrist got the injury. injury. Yeah, didn't play for five weeks, and then essentially didn't technically play. Thomas golf for five weeks either. Right, I mean, he right. played and, and got better and got better, but got better. But 
you really knew for 10 weeks he didn't have a chance to win yeah. as he was trying to get get to this point. You picked him all the way along. You saw the progress. And sure enough, he showed off uh, this week uh, clearly 100% healthy. And, um, you know, his game looked uh, unstoppable. and be interesting to see if he can carry into Eastlake uh, next week uh, with a two-shot lead. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to be doing our sports wagering recap as well, where I was a superstar on the weekend. But we're going to hold that until we do that show. Made lots of money this weekend with that uh, win by Thomas. So anyway, yeah, I mean... It's, it, we got the guys moving in though. So let's get to what matters, which is next week. Some guys made moves and then there was some tragic stories like Tway, which got well, there and then backed up. He needed one hole to get in and he couldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, Tway actually, uh, ne- uh he I, came from under. Not got in the green, never got in the green. He was actually pretty far back, but he had a run at the end there where he made Four a couple birdies in a row and then had some, uh, bad shots on 18 there and did all he needed was a bird to make it. The real guy, JT posted. He bogeyed 18 to yeah, miss my out. God, eh? He's the real guy who was inside. Um, but yeah, you had a lot of ups and downs. But you had Matsuyama move in, Glover move in, and Kokrak move in. You had Varner move out, Larry move out, and Putnam move out. So those and were... And Spieth stay out. Tiger stay out. Yeah, yeah. They were so Couldn't far back coming into this week. Um, you know, Howard's another guy. Phil's another guy. A lot of big names. Jason Day going home. Yeah. Um, you know, you got a lot of interesting guys that did make it. Uh Roy Sabatini was heartbreaking. He yeah, kinda, man. He wasn't in it to start the week, but was in it going into the final round and moved back. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it was one it was of those... For a guy 21 years on tour. So much wanted to see him make it in there. But one of the great stories was Lucas Glover. And last time he was in, it was 2009, which would probably be right near the beginning, if not the beginning, has had to retool his whole game and come back. He was well inside and then tried to give it away. I was double bogey. Oh my 17. god, I was having a heart attack. Wait, didn't he bogey even 16, then double bogey or something? Yeah, he bogey Anyway, 16, he took himself 17. like he was gonna be out of it. He had to make par in 18. He made it. So good for him. That's a long road back, man. You know, because you've been you've been playing golf your whole life and you're young, so it's it, you know, you've got the inspiration of that. But when you're Glover and it's 2009 and you're older, I imagine he's mid. 30s maybe or older Near 40. and uh to make to put all that effort and same with 17 21 years on tour many years that he hasn't been close now and puts all that work in to get back in the game i i, I find those stories amazing and the effort those guys will put in at their age to make it happen so g- good for glover he used, he's coached by a coach that you used to work with so we kind of well, know know yeah. of him a little bit more than we might some other players that follow and another thing about glover you know like he said he goes well, you know, it's been 10 years for me, but for others, it's so easy. And that really shows you yeah. the level of some of these guys and the phenomenons that they are. That, you know, you see Sabatini's and Glover's. What it really opens your eyes to is that how talented Thomas's are and, yeah, and, yeah. and Tigers and, 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 you know, even Finau's and, and Shoffley's and, and DJ's and Brooks. Like, like these guys are automatically in tour championships every yeah. year they teed up. And then you see guys like this. Who seventeen didn't make it since the first year it had yeah, ever been yeah. uh, the tour, uh, the FedEx Cup. So you know you see these other guys that have to grind and actually really really work their ass off to be at a stage that's not even the greatest in the world. Well, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say maybe the best in the world work as hard as them, but they their hard work gets them to number one in the world. Yeah. This hard work gets them to a tour championship. Well, Glover 30. was it's, almost it's incredible. Glover was almost sad in the moment of being happy. About how much work he had to put in. He looked exhausted. Yeah. Like, not sad, but he looked exhausted. Well, I think the way he finished didn't help. No. I mean, bogey double, I think, definitely pissed him off and felt like he probably choked a little bit. But it almost looked like a guy that worked so hard to get back that it was hard for him to even enjoy that. It was just like, I think he was almost confused of his emotions. Like, he was happy to be there, but the same thing was like, oh my God. Like, Like all that. All all that. that Almost threw it away. And I think a little bit, and you heard in his comment when he said, you know, other guys, it's probably starts to bug some of these older guys yeah. that see, you know, someone like Thomas and Cantlay and these guys just out there shooting low scores every week and, and really their careers look very easy, I'm sure, to uh, yeah, Lucas Glover and sure. Sabatini. And these guys, those probably, guys have always been kind of the road warriors. I mean, lots of money. I mean, Sabatini's made what? You said 30 million? Oh, 35 million. But and Glover not, has the U.S. Open. He's he not a number one in the world ever. And Glover was, he made the U.S. Open, like you say, won that. But the rest of it's kind of been journeyman like. But make them lots of money, so that's fine. They they had great careers. But Sabatini, but by you the way, see the work since the FedEx Cup has come in, he hasn't finished inside the top 100 yeah. since the first tour championship, um, even though he kept his card every year. But yeah. He's always been 100 or 125. So it's that type of things that people don't realize um, that is very grueling on these guys, obviously. Yeah. And going back to Web.com, even if you make 
you know, two million dollars on the PGA Tour the year you go down because I think actually it was one point four this year. Yeah, it's still just dejecting to your career. And Lucas Glover apparently had done it a couple of times. Obviously, also a former U.S. Open winner. Yeah. Imagine at that yeah. point of your career, you have to go back. You probably think you're going to be one of those guys. Yeah. Where life's just easy and it just wasn't. Instead, so, he was just a one week guy who had his yeah. great week, won the U.S. Open. But anyway, those are great stories. Those guys are in. That's great to uh, to see. We know about all the guys at the top. We're going to talk about them Wednesday. I just love those stories. I'm disappointed. Adam Hadwin, I picked him. Uh, he went backwards, which was too bad. But Canadian Corey Connors. But we do have a Canadian. Exactly. Go ahead and talk about Corey. Yeah, so Corey Connors has made, like you said, you, uh, Hadwin, obviously disappointing. Plus four. Yeah, he was right there. On Sunday, although he needed top six finish to yeah. really go in a little bit. But he was like fifth or sixth going in and really backed up. But a turning of the tide, you know, Corey Connors, uh, a lot younger at 26 years old, uh, rookie on tour, has now made the tour championship, also has a win this year. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. How many rookies made the Tour Championship? He might be the only one. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. But anyways, he is making it as a rookie. And you got to remember, he started this year off of conditional status because he finished 126 the year yeah. before and did not gain full status back. So he did Monday qualifiers. Actually, for his win, year. he was a Monday qualifier. For his win, he had to do a Monday qualifier. Now, um, not the Monday qualifiers that people at home think of yeah. when they go through two stages, but he had to Monday qualify for a lot of his events, including his win. And then he finally got full status. Yeah. And now he fell off a little bit, as we expected, once you win. He's come back here with a strong showing this week at tied 7th. He's going to the Tour Championship, but kind of a changing of the guard for top Canadian golfer. Yeah. He's definitely the guy, I think, going forward at 26 years old. Got a win. more The most decorated, I think, amateur crew at the 2nd well, of the second USM. USM yeah. um, and now making the Tour Championship as a rookie. Very interesting to see him going forward. And uh, hopefully he can have a good week. Um, like I said, Wednesday we're gonna break down where they start, but yeah. I know for sure he'll be starting at even par, um, because twenty six through thirty start even par. So he'll be ten shots back. So we won't we far. won't likely be betting him to win the event, but it doesn't matter. It, it's great for Kenny and Golf. Great to have the next guy come in. He's younger. He's got that. He's got that star power. He's got the background with the the USAM and all that kind of stuff. And one win this year. So we're looking for Corey. So we're so glad he got in there. We'll be following uh, specifically him on our side because we're from Canada. And um, we'll be hoping that we can get a Canadian and at least show well in the final tournament. But getting there is a big accomplishment either way. So there you go. That's kind of some of the highlights. Uh, we're going to talk way more in depth on Wednesday when we talk about the uh, the tournament coming up. And we'll look forward to a fantastic finish to the golf season.